So, beautiful South Africans, a great start to the morning. And next up, we have Mr. Simon Sekhwabe, who is our executive of the ASO department, a huge department at the CAA. And he's also got a speech. He's been talking to us more about the general aviation safety strategy. Mr. Sekhwabe, are you ready to fire away? Program director, I am ready. Please go ahead, sir. Good to have you. Thank you, Program Director. Let me begin by acknowledging the presence, I mean, online presence of our CEO, the Director of Civil Aviation, Ms. Poppy Koza. The same goes to Mr. Neil Dilange, Mr. Johan Loitering, Mr. Pierre Lopsha, Mr. Freddy Tong, Mr. Todd Lutaga. Good morning to you all, as everyone that has logged in and is following the, with this webinar. We truly appreciate your presence, ladies and gentlemen. The director alluded to the fact that the broader consultation has already taken place when this strategy was developed. That was key as we regard this as not just a CA only initiative, but a broader collaborative process that requires an all hands on deck approach if it were to truly be successful. Allow me to just focus on silent point of the general aviation safety strategy, the gas. We reflected on past challenges and successes. What I mean, a post-mortem was performed on both the GASI, which was a general aviation safety initiative, together with the cross-functional accident reduction plan, the CFAP, which are past safety initiatives. Most importantly, the success of this past initiative and other safety-related campaigns and other efforts were lifted and incorporated into the process of developing the case, making it what it is today a comprehensive and multi-stakeholder safety project. It is about time we draw a lesson on what works in an airline environment. The team inter interrogated and I personally reflected on factors that makes airline operations safer than general aviation operation. It all boils down to a very high level of oversight and control as aspect of operation. There is a process dedicated to monitoring flight profiles and the key factor is that corrective feedback is provided for an accidents known as Aviation Integrated Monitoring System, the AIMS. There also is entrenched culture of meticulous pre-flight planning. This is coupled with availability of NOTEM or notice to airmen for those who prefer English instead of common aviation terminology, as well as meteorological data, including satellite photographic images. There are also extensive initial type training program. This is supported by high level of technical training and testing you guess it's right. There is also multi-crew resource management, in short, CRMA. Airline also rely and carry out multi-crew operation. There is meticulous flight crew selection procedure and psychological profiling. This is supported by also intensive medical examination on regular basis. I mean, you, could, you guess some pilots or some people are more healthy than the others. There there is a recurrent training program, including both technical and flight handling skills. The above is supported by the use of highly experienced instructors. Modern technical and flight training facilities exist. Some of that most small operators cannot afford. There is ongoing maintenance of discipline by both the airlines and professional standard committee within the various pilot associations. Active peer review, flight standard checking plays a critical role in this sector. Most oil airlines also give care groups or programs created within their structures to deal with personal problems experienced by flight crew. Now, above the, this place, what are the chances that system could fail? I'm now going to try and list some of the main groups of deficiencies that have been identified in the general aviation sector. Contemporary accident reports statistics show pilot remains the weakest link in the accident causation chain and should be the focus area. Truth be told, it is also evident that standard of primary instructor leave much to be desired. The system of inexperienced pilot acting as a initial trainer directly indirectly resulting in fatal training accident. Recommendation from accident and incident report. Trends are seldom converted into accident prevention strategy or incorporated in the training curriculum. Major causation and contributing factor of accident are rooted and desensitized society widespread disregard of value of life or well-being and safety of fellow citizen, general resentment of authority, culture of lawlessness, appetite for risk, ingrained misconception and weakness in the training. I know this is mouthful, right? But it is what the research point to. Existing accident reduction technique 
using heuristic to reduce probability of accident are believed to be ineffectual, thereby adding to cognitive workload of pilot, and ultimately that tends to overwhelm them. Criminological origins and development of accident have never been explored nor understood. Pursuant to the principle that aircraft accident and incident investigation are not meant to be apportioned blame, but to prevent accident could possibly hamper the effort to reduce accident through prosecution and punitive action. Let us say a handful of people may take unnecessary risk, knowing very well that should they walk away from the wreckage, there will be no punitive measures taken against them. Training curriculum do not demonstrate how accident develop, what the accident uh, precipitate circumstance might be, and how causal factors contributing to accident are identified, managed, and eliminated. Flight training theory and practical training are aimed at career goals, while accident causal and contributing factors and circumstances conducive to accident are negated and not addressed at all. Pilots are not equipped to deal with factors external to the cockpit that overwhelm them. These include but are not limited to undue pressure on pilots, negative group dynamics, unrealistic expectation, and misconception. Pilot need guidance, mentorship program to recognize and avoid potential error in judgment and to improve decision-making skill. With that said, allow me to conclude my remarks by pointing out that this strategy aims, among others, to provide participants with dedicated publication and social media platform to share ideas and knowledge. We must be cognizant of the fact that threat of remotely piloted aircraft, ARPAS, continue to escalate should solution not be found to avoid catastrophic event, especially from general aviation perspective. ARPAS are often operated in confluence of airways near busy centers and in controlled airspace. The same applies to the use of laser. In addition, support to both medical profession as well as pilot must be enhanced to develop a system to ensure the integrity of the medical assessment on one hand and to provide mechanism to pilot to deal with stress related to demand of cockpit environment on the other. Let's consider what I have said, just mentioned as part of the opportunities and threats that were identified during the drafting of this strategy. The team really done a great job and looked at international best practice, which will have not been ignored. We cannot afford to reinvent the wheel as there are no new cases of accident. It is just a matter of the same course by different people on a different day. Having said that, I know that the majority of us remain hopeful and the threat of general aviation as a perfect collaboration and life-changing initiative that will usher life-saving, everlasting positive changes to the problem areas in general aviation operation. Ladies and gentlemen, it is in our hands and to solve, to save life. Let us, the journey begin from this moment on. Thank you, Chief Program Director. Let the journey begin. Let the journey begin. Absolutely. Thank you, Exec ASO. Mr. Se Simon Sehwabe, um, I must say I do appreciate the support on the salt and pepper look as, as well. <laughs> um, but more so appreciate uh, what you've mentioned, the broad collaborative process. It's a term that's used quite widely um, in, in this generation of 4IR. It's good to see such terminology being used in, in strategic processes as well, uh, in regard to our industry more especially. And uh, another positive thing which I want to commend you on is the very technical approach which you seemingly and, and certainly have the knowledge on mentioning the very specific aspects uh, which, which, are re which, which are certain some of the causal factors uh, in regard to, to aircraft accidents and that's very positive. So we thank you, Mr. Mr. Sehwabe.